Mr. Mogan, could you hit the lights for me, please? Thank you. Okay, so this video is going to explain a little bit about why we're here, and then we're going to ask for a little bit of support um, from you. So we have our friends from the Lift Life Foundation here. Um, that's who you see around filming. Last, last year, um, we submitted our entry into a contest so that we could get our weight room completely renovated. And so this video will kind of go into our submission video a little bit and what this project is all about. So here we go. Hello, Park High School. It's the Lift Life team here. Dylan, Michaela, Kirk, and Jim. The Lift Life Foundation is a nonprofit organization powered by bodybuilding.com. Our mission is to travel around the country, identify old and outdated weight rooms, and completely transform them into state-of-the-art training facilities. Over a year ago, your athletic director, Regina Wood, nominated Park High School for a Lift Life renovation. After reviewing your video submission, we are excited to announce that we have selected you as a semi-finalist for our next project. We sent our film crews to each of the final schools to have them show us why they deserve the top spot. All right, Park High, it's your time to shine. Next, you'll see a short clip of your video submission. Yes. What are we doing right now? Okay, we're outside of uh, Park High School. We're getting ready to go in. They're having their pep assembly right now. They have no idea that we are here, and so we're gonna go in and surprise them um, and let them know that they have been chosen for the next renovation. So, uh, a little nervous, but here we go. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. Let's scenes. go time. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to Park High School. My name is Regina Wood. I'm the activities director here in Livingston, Montana. Our school was completely renovated in 2012. Even in the time of economic downturn, our community passed a bond for $15 million to update our school with brand new technology, equipment, state of the art, everything. The only place that was untouched, unfortunately, was our weight room. So it's still the exact same as it was in 1998. This leg press machine sticks when you get much weight on it. It's not very good. Then our bike is missing pedals, as you can see. I definitely think that if we updated the weight room, we could get more people in it, so we could like kind of promote working out and getting definitely. in shape and park high more. I think we need to renovate our weight room, so that's important. So that we can have better sports programs, because you don't have to buy stuff like this. <laughs> What do you think, Park High? We are one of four schools in the nation being considered for this project right now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at what are we doing? <laughs> did we interrupt something? You did. Oh my gosh. We could not miss the opportunity to come meet you guys in person, see, you know, just kind of what your school is about. Um, as you saw, we are the Lift Life team. Um, <laughs> Uh, if anybody doesn't know, this is my older sister, so uh, I'm real happy to be here. Uh, so anyway, the real reason we wanted to come out was to, to announce that uh, you guys are not a semi-finalist, but we have decided to pick Park High School as our next Lift Life in such a whirlwind like I'm still in a little bit of shock it was it was a very cool surprise I'm very impressed that everybody pulled it off but um, it just makes me so humbled and so excited for our kids and you know I've had teachers stopping in all day as they've been able to catch me and just saying how excited they are and then just how excited the kids are which for me is even better you know I, I knew that I would be excited about it but to hear that they just can't stop talking about it is really cool 
Regina Wood is the athletic director here at Park High, and she's actually my sister. We talked a little bit about, you know, would they be a candidate for something like this? I mean, they're in a rural community, you know, and for me, I was like, I, I feel like you should absolutely, you know, nominate your school, um, you know, submit a video, go through the whole process. I can't make the decision, you know, I'm, I'm part of it, but ultimately it's going to come down to, you know, everybody else on the team, our board members, that kind of stuff. And we could really get a sense that they needed and wanted this weight room and that it would impact so many different layers throughout the school and the community. So Livingston is kind of an interesting place. So it's a railroad town, as I'm sure you've discovered. And working for the railroad, you made more than you did in a lot of professional jobs. Then in 1985, the railroad pulled out. So now here we are two generations later. It's, it's quite a mix in this community. You have very wealthy people here, but 50% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. That means you're one or two paychecks away from poverty, away from maybe losing your house or not being able to pay the rent. The timing of you all doing this, there's no way you're gonna understand what you've done for the school, especially with everything that we have planned with our community and with our school and, and where this is gonna take off. You know, we do, we do have a, an extreme population of poverty and um, we have people that, that don't have resources that, um, that everyone thinks are available to everyone. Um, and it's not just healthcare, it's even just the wherewithal to know where to get help and how to get help. We, we talked about it, we had a whole day of suicide prevention um, a, a few months ago, you know, and it just looked at all the different factors that, um, that would make Park County the number one rate of suicide county in the, in the state. The cause of a suicide is complex. What I see, though, is issues connected with generational poverty, smoking and drinking and drug abuse and struggles with mental illness. We're working on a lot of trauma-informed practices and uh, so working with kids with chronic trauma and poverty. So we have started a district-wide and, and involved our community to make it community-wide and, and we're, going to, we're actually starting the movement. It's called Live Well 49. We do in Montana have the highest suicide rate in the nation. Access to mental health care is um, difficult, so building stronger supports and connection is, you know, one way to try to change that and at least make sure that people are connected to each other. It's pretty special that we were chosen and someone saw that in this community and wanted to give that gift. That's pretty amazing. So part of why I think this project ties nicely into the needs of the community is over time, that physical strength, it transfers to your mental strength. And I think that's where this is going to help so much is that you know it, it hopefully will be a place that kids want to be and they want to be in there more and more. Um, and not just because they're in a sport, but because you know they're concerned about their overall health and it's a place that they know they can go and be safe and have fun and get better. And um, you know that would be the, the ideal big picture goal, I think, for, for everyone in the school. So when we came through the weight room for our first initial tour, uh, seeing the space for the first time was really cool. It actually, this particular one is a lot smaller than we initially thought uh, and what was kind of perceived through the video. I think that, you know, in smaller schools and, and schools in general, you, you make do with what you have, you know, and we do, we have a lot of people in this community that are willing to step up and, and always wanting to help out the school. So a lot of the equipment's donated, a lot of the upholstery was, you know, oh, I know someone that can do that. And so, you know, we, we pieced that together and I think no matter what you have, we're trying to instill in the kids a sense of pride and a sense of discipline and a sense of, you know, taking care of things and leaving things better than you found them and, um, and making that, you know, if you're going to do those little things, then hopefully those bigger things get done as well. We're making the best with what we have, but uh, we only have three platforms. Most of our bars are not Olympic bars. A lot of them are bent and starting to rust and their platforms are handmade. Somebody took some rubber mats and kind of tried to glue them to laminate flooring. The entire school was 
the, the inside was completely done, that new gym and the new art wing was added on. You know, all this money was being put into education and it was kind of like the weight room was the last, you know, the, that seems frivolous, you know, it's, it's just the weight room. And I think it was just kind of like, it's good enough. When, when I first got here and saw the weight room, um, it, it wasn't organized and it was kind of a mess and there was no pride. I mean, it was really clear. They're doing a much better job of it now. Um, because they understand how important it is and they're taking pride in it. So all our kids are, are trying to keep it, keep it pretty, you know, pretty organized. You know, right now there's, you know, some of those machines, you know, the, the bolts have come loose on the seats and they, were, they weren't safe. And there's, that, there's a huge, that huge machine in there, I don't even know what it's called. And it's too big for that room and there's just no use. If you, if you use the space, if you would figure out how much that space is really being used, it's not. And so it's, it's inefficient. Is it a workable space, you guys? I mean... Uh, it's exciting. I mean, we love seeing this um, stage. At this point, uh, the opportunities are, are endless, and yeah. sky, the sky's the limit. And this is all going to go away because the bench yeah, is the into the racks. I have this uh, little, um, I guess, post-it note that I've been collecting for the last, uh, since, I, since I started working with kids and noticed how crappy our weight room is. But just things that, you know, we need to try to find money for, right? Pull up bars, uh, fix the bars that we have, uh, we need additional plates. What we're going to do about the rowing machine and um, just stuff like that that we were going to try to find um, try to find money for or see if somebody in the community would buy it for us. So, But I am now going to throw it away. How's it going, sir? I'm Derek. I'm the facilities director. So when we came in here and we, we kind of dissected this space, there is a, uh, a small hallway off to you know, the left-hand side. One of the next questions came about is this wall. Maybe it could go away. I cannot express to you how much I'd love to get rid of this wall. This, is, this hallway is a, a, is a wasted space and it wants to have things thrown in. Yeah. People want to just because yeah. it's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. We're in discussions about if we can remove this wall or not. It will give us another six or seven you know, feet down this hallway. So it would really kind of open up the space and kind of give us a, a more dramatic transformation to, to the weight room. The wall is a load-bearing wall, so that means that you know, it, it's, it's supporting the roof at that point. Um, and so we are, we're actively looking at what our options are. That's going to be kind of the major piece that you know, on the construction side that we're going to have to deal with. Yep. Last summer we like added on the little, we welded the, bottom the extensions or? on for the weights. Oh, okay. And they're kind of tricky sometimes to wiggle on and off those plates. Um, is there any like pieces of equipment that you need, like that you don't have right now? Uh, we do just a lot of Olympic workouts okay. right now and the racks are kind of just, we've been wanting to get new racks. Most of the time we have to do, like if we have a workout, we have to like, really go in like different orders and try to like figure out how to do it without like waiting most of the time right. like, to use certain utilize the hour that you have or whatever per period i feel like in athletics the once we all started kind of like my our class started to build around the weight room when it came to games we had something to fall back on like we know like how hard we've worked do you feel like that team building aspect yeah yeah it definitely here. comes here yeah and I think that it's a good place to start here, like just to like get in the routine and being part of like a team helps so much in like every other aspect, like learning how to like get along with people, even if you might have like differences. Putting in is all that you have, like no matter what, it just helps like in every aspect of life, like not just in sports. I was really impressed by their excitement and enthusiasm that we were there doing this project for them. And that makes me even more pumped to, to to do this for them and to give them a quality weight room that they can use. They have a space, it's a functional space, and they, they take care of what they have, but there's, there's, there's more to it. They need you know, a, a multi-level type of training facility. It seems like they've got a lot of different kids coming through here, uh, and they've all got a different sport or a different way of training. And so we're really focusing on creating a cross-functional, multi-purpose weight room where we can maximize the space. If we do what we're supposed to do, I think it's gonna be amazing. So we put out a call to all of our um, coaches and athletes and we set up a time on a Sunday that said, you know, bring anybody you can, it wasn't required, but we probably had about 40 people 
show up um, to help move equipment. You know, basically like just a little ant line of people coming out of the old weight room up into the new space. There were a few of the bigger pieces that we had to pull the bleachers out and move them up through the gate. I mean, the kids were, they were into it. They, I think they know that it's for, you know, this thing that's going to benefit them so much. Everyone's been so flexible and patient with it to just say, yeah, whatever we need to do to make it work. Ready guys, one, two, three. Hey, let fly. Probably our biggest change has been our new strength and conditioning coach that we hired over the summer. So that's been a, a great change already just for the, the culture of, of that part of the school. Okay, so let's get the jump ropes out. Those of you who don't have access to jump rope, we're gonna do jump ejects. All right, so right now we're actually in our current weight room and this is what we've got. We've got this space, it's the mezzanine area in the gymnasium. Um, you know, it's not ideal. We're always having to share the space with other activities, other sports, but I always tell the athletes that, you know, we're gonna make whatever space we have work. Okay, ready to rock? Okay, get in groups of three or four. Check the sheet. Okay, we've got our paper up there. You guys know the drill by now. Let's do three sets of eight on the, on the deadlifts, on the bench. Okay, modify it, because we've got short time today. I mean, anything that's a step up from this is gonna be a win. Um, but what I see is, uh, personally, I see uh, our sports teams benefiting from this, the general student body. I had a kid uh, was just talking to me in my last strength and conditioning class. He goes over to a commercial gym here in town because, uh, you know, this isn't the most exciting place to work out. Um, he said once we get a new gym, he's going to start lifting here at the school. So that I would like to see. I'd like to see the students staying here in the school, after school. We know that the kids that are involved in after school programs, their grades go up, their graduation grades go up. Um, issues with drugs and alcohol go way down. So I just see this weight room as just really the final piece to tying together our little community here in Livingston. We're visiting with Kirk Calzacorda with the Lift Life Foundation. And how many do you think you can get done here over the course of a year? Uh, so we do two projects per year. It takes about three to four months per project of back-end planning and logistics and ordering uh, everything that goes into it. We do it in a very short amount of time and a uh, floor to ceiling overhaul um, complete with state-of-the-art equipment for these uh, underprivileged students uh, at these underfunded high schools. Well, I, I think it's great having spent a lot of my life in weight rooms. I imagine as you have. Uh, congrats, and I think it's a great thing. Hey everybody, it is day four of our fourth gym transformation here in Livingston, Montana. Um, as you can tell, our space is now empty. About five or six days ago, this place was full of weight equipment and a fully functional gym. At this point, we have completely uh, demoed the entire thing from floor to ceiling. We're super excited to kind of wrap up this week, get going, um, and, and see what happens over the next three weeks when we come back. Uh, we're gonna get going and, and really, really hammer this thing hard. Hey, how are you guys? There you are. Buddy. Hello. Thanks for joining us today. I'm just going to run through the, the game plan after being in Montana all last week, demoing okay. the wall and the ceilings. Andrew, did you get that email I sent you this morning? I did. I sure did. Okay. So we'll kind of go through all those files that we sent. Um, a lot of the kids didn't really have like a wish list besides like they, the girls wanted to see like bright gold. But other than that, it's the equipment. They want the most functional equipment. So mine is just kind of like the cherry on top, I guess. So when I go back and talk to the guys, we kind of throw out all the wild ideas of, should we do turf? Should we do like gold plated weights? Should we do like, I think it just starts from there. And then whatever is A, feasible, B, not too over the top, and C, kind of meets the requirements they want, then we'll start to go through that. And then I'll start to develop different logos and different ideas. but. That's just where it starts, is like kind of siphoning through everything we've gathered here and going from there. Thanks, Andrew. Of course. We'll see you in a month. I know we'll see, yeah, literally less than a month. It's crazy. The 
last time I was in there, um, when Dylan was here and they did that, they took the wall out and had done kind of that demo. That was the last time I was in there. So it's been about a month. Just the bare walls and the, you know, the wall was taken out and I could see that, but I haven't seen anything since. This space has changed dramatically, even structurally. Prior to us getting here, this used to be a wall. This actually was a hallway. After we got that cinder block wall out, um, we left. Um, during that time, we had the space painted and the mirrors came in. And so when we came back, we had to start building back the ceilings and getting the lights back installed. We, we built that whole grid system. We came in, we started dropping tiles, um, and then we started kind of doing borders and all that kind of stuff over the, the next two days. All right, guys, day four. The uh, ceiling is now complete. It's the moment we've been waiting for. The flooring's arrived. I got Jody with HC Company here and, and James to help us out. We're uh, gonna open this thing up and see what she looks like in a truck. Come on, stop! Sada, keep us busy for two or three days. Stay tuned. <laughs> Based on budget for this project, we had to do the flooring ourselves, so it was a big undertaking, but we uh, were able to, to tackle it and, and do a, a quality job. Um, you know, so we're really happy with, with how it turned out. And I think this is, this is the first project that we can truly say that we've done uh, the entire project from floor to ceiling now. You know, it's always been a, a floor to ceiling transformation, but we legitimately have taken this on 100% um, by ourselves, and now we got all our uh, our partners coming in. We have kind of the infrastructure in place now. Now we just have to, to transform the rest of it. I really get the sense that the, the kids don't have any idea how different it's going to look. I'm just excited for the upgrade, honestly. Us being the first ones to use it, that's going to be pretty cool. Like, you know, when we do it during the summer, it's always like stuff's falling apart. Yeah. And once, like once every week, we have to like organize all the stuff because it's just all over the place. What do you want to do next? I was interviewed by some kids for the newspaper, the student newspaper, you know, and when I was talking to them um, just about, you know, what I think, just based on seeing some of the videos and stuff, I mean, they were just like, what? It's not just like, you know, a couple new pieces of equipment and that sort of thing. So while we put the video of some of the previous projects out there, I don't think a lot of the kids have seen them. And so while they're excited, I don't think they really know what's coming, which I don't know, good or bad. That's kind of the sense I get. All right guys, so for those of you guys that haven't been here yet, we're gonna get ready to start moving a lot of equipment. Um, the way that we've kind of got this thing designed here is we're gonna set it all on that platform out here to keep everybody out of the water from tracking it back into the gym. So uh, let's go out there, have a good time, and get this thing done. One good thing about this uh, particular school this time is with the ways these doors are set up for this particular school, we have easy access into the weight room, so it's going to make this job so much easier compared to the ones we've done in the past. We had to cover up some of the equipment. We put like blankets over top of them as we were like rolling them around because they were too big to fit through the single door. And they're all trying to peek and look around and I told them to look away and to be surprised. So this morning we've been focused on assembling the rig. There's three different pieces, but two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 uprights that we had to uh, assemble, get plumb, get square, so there's a lot of measurements involved. And then once we got it in the center of the platforms here, we had to actually bolt them to the floor. The details on this thing are amazing. Check out the uh, logos up here. Like you always go to a gym and you just start working out, but you don't understand like the details, every little thing that like stacks up to actually be able to lift 100 pounds. You just don't lift 100 pounds. It's like 20 pieces in that 100 pounds that enable you to lift that. So that's the cool part to like actually see all this stuff come together. I think they're awesome. I think the gold is exactly what we wanted and it's gonna be a really cool, unique piece that we've never done before. Honestly, I think we're in great shape. The reason we laid this gym out the way that we did was because we understood that it's not just for kids that are athletes, it's for all the kids. I think anybody will be able to walk in here and get a workout in. I do get the sense that, you know, people downplay where they come from, that, you know, it's just Park High. Um, and I'm not sure where that stems from. It seems to be a feeling of, um, 
even what they have here they're not worthy of, that it's not for them, it's for somebody else. The community and the students think that they're like second class in some way. The other thing is I think this is not a new phenomenon. I think this attitude of being kind of second class people has been here a while, long before I've been here. And so we really need something big to change that, uh, a new culture. And I think that this weight room could be that, could be that big change. We need to be more competitive here at Park High School. Uh, we are aware of that and it starts in the weight room and so it will give our kids that self-efficacy that, that not only do we have a nice weight room but now you got to put into time. I think everywhere from how, you, how the kids feel to how they compete, it's going to have a huge effect. You know, the kids talk about other weight rooms across the state. I hear it constantly of, you know, you should see Dylan's weight room, you should see Butte Central's weight room. I wish we had that. I mean, I hear that constantly. So I think that, you know, for kids to know that other schools are going to come in here and see that and, and think that about them, it's, it's such a small thing, but um, but that's that's huge. And, you know, we're, we're trying to change tradition and culture and all of those things. Again, the, the timeliness of this and being a key focus of what our coaches and our board and our administration is looking at to say, you know, we need to raise those expectations. Today's Thursday. Um, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. is the reveal. And so um, today is uh, a lot about just buttoning up loose ends. Through planning and all that kind of stuff, we've been able to stay ahead of schedule. So we're not you know, behind the eight ball at this point. We are, you know, where we needed to be every, at the end of every day. We didn't have to put in, you know, 20 hour days to get ready to go the next day to do it again. And so I feel more relaxed on, on our process and where we're at through this whole thing. Um, I, I don't have any doubt that with the team we have, we're, we're gonna come through on this one. It's homecoming week for Park High, and so they do uh, an Ironman volleyball game. The Lift Life team was invited to uh, put together a team. Seven o'clock tonight, we're gonna uh, bring that house down. them and we will never be able to repay them obviously if we could repay them we would have just done it ourselves but um, they will never know how much we are grateful for what they have given you guys as a community so we hope that you will go in there with that mindset of wow this is a gift that was given to us by this group of people and they believe in helping students and that is pretty cool we are so excited that today has finally come um, as Regina said, my name is Dylan Cooper. I have the privilege of working for the Lift Life Foundation and also dominating in some Ironman volleyball. For those of you who didn't see it, we actually got crushed by your senior boys last night. So this has been an experience we will never forget. 
We hope this new training facility not only allows you to reap the benefits of getting super swole like my friend Rob here. No, but I, we really do. We hope it acts as a rally point for new beginnings. We hope it gives the entire student body the opportunity to train in a safe, multi-use, multi-sport sanctuary that belongs to you, the students. We hope that every time you step in there, you're reminded that your local community and people from across the country they believe in you guys. They want you guys to succeed. So remember that when you're in there putting in that hard work. People really do care about you. They want you to succeed. right time for us you know what I mean it's just like um, it's, it's life-changing every morning since last March in here it's six in the morning it's just nothing but bad ways it's crazy it's crazy and I really like what you guys did with the space extremely intelligent and we talked about it being like multifunctional for females males classes you know, strength, speed, right. power, and I think there's something for everyone. Absolutely. And, and some of the stuff I've never, I haven't even seen, and I thought I saw it all, but I haven't. So it's going to be fun to kind of see how some of this works. <laughs> Can we bump? Things are going to be a little bit different here in our brand new weight room. Okay, I know, I know everybody's excited. Um, but you'll find that there's still barbells in there, there's still dumbbells in there, there's still weight in there, and we're going to be moving it, all right? Nothing different there. So let's get our workout in. An investment like this, and this is what this is, this is an investment into our community. The students that are going to be able to uh, use this weight room and then benefit from it, and then their kids, the ripple effect can go just far down the line. I was kind of amazed that there was this much room to begin with. Uh, I don't know, I just, I just didn't realize that what our weight room used to be could turn into this. Like, it's, it's insane. We've been fighting kind of this second class mentality for a long time. And um, I think that it's very hard to uh, think that in a facility like this. So, listen up. What do we, what do we think? I love it. It's, awesome. right? it's, amazing. it's amazing. We're going to take it up a notch, all right? So the first few weeks we've been doing total body stuff. Um, you guys are getting stronger. I can see it already. Okay, with a facility like this, the sky's the limit. I really see big things, and I see us as a first-class school and first-class community, period. Period.